Sarika Nashish from IIT Kharagpur. Welcome you heartily to this session. Uh, there is an announcement from COE SEA, uh, IIT Kharagpur. COE SEA is jointly organizing an international conference uh, on maintenance and uh, uh, on maintenance and intelligent asset management with three verticals. There is a typo error. Uh, it is international conference. Uh, asset management and systems, reliability, availability, and maintainability, and maintenance management, and safety engineering and analytics, security, uh, risk management, and human factors. So the date is December 12th to 15th, 2021. Abstract submission deadline is 5th of August, 2021. And it is being done jointly with the Federation uh, University of Australia, Asset Management Council, Council Australia, and others. So uh, we would now invite uh, Professor uh, J. Maithi, Chairman of COE SEA, Professor Obi Krishna, the convener of the weekend talk series, and our esteemed expert speaker of the session, Professor David Manka, to the virtual dais. Uh, Professor David Manka, he is PhD and co-author uh, of more than 260 peer-reviewed publications. He is a professor of process systems engineering and head of PSC lab at Polymy Italy since 2002. He was a founder and director of R&D and uh, engineering department at, at uh, Mitualis, a spin-off company of Polymy, working on operator training simulation in 3D immersive virtual environments. His research topics include design, uh, simulation, dynamics, control, data reconciliation, optimization, planning, scheduling, supply chain, economic assessment, market uncertainty, key performance indicators, process and analytical technologies, accident simulation, and the list is endless, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, under his direction, the PSE lab had worked on several European and Italian research projects with a fruitful collaboration with international universities and companies. Professor David has worked on several industrial plants and processes, such as incineration, crude oil distillation, petrochemical polymerization, pharma equipment, granulators, dryers, perforated pans, optimal drug administration, individualized pharma cokinetics, uh, intravenous anesthesia, and demilitarization activities also. So he was involved in the design and coding of computer programs for the simulation of chemical plants and dedicated process units together with an industrial accident simulator and a performance assessment procedure for industrial operators. And today's topic is very relevant and interesting that is virtual reality and accident simulation so with this i request to i request professor maithi chairman coesea to formally welcome our expert speaker over to you sir thank you mom uh, it's it is our great pleasure to invite professor david manka head of the process systems engineering lab Polytechnic University uh, of Milan, Polymy, and he is very well known expert in design, simulation, optimization, control, and process safety, particularly virtual reality, accident simulation in this area. And we are really uh, benefited, and we are really overwhelmed by your kind gesture in accepting our invitation for this we can talk in safety engineering management and analytics as you know iit kharagpur is one of the premier institutions of india and its alumni base is spread across the world it's one of the renowned institutions in the world Center of Excellence in Safety Engineering and Analytics. It aims to become the one of the best centers in this particular field. And we are really fortunate enough to have you today. And virtual reality and accident simulation, which is the state of the art technology and techniques combining together how the accident prevention and safety management and safety training can be made. This is the days, uh, today's basically the key areas. So with this, I 
request Professor Manka to take the stage and deliver your speech. Thank you, Professor Manka. Okay. So can you see that my presentation as a whole screen? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Okay, so thank you everybody to for attending this um, this uh, late evening for India. Uh, not not very late, but however, um, uh, evening a meeting uh, about uh, these topics. As you see, the and for the very nice introduction by my colleagues. Uh, and uh, the topic will be about virtual reality and accident simulation. Just to give you an idea, uh, I, I am from Italy. This is Italy, the brown uh, country. These gray, dark gray countries are, let's say, um, so this is Italy, and the dark uh, gray countries are Europe. Uh, in Italy, we live here in uh, Lombardia. Lombardy is a region. Uh, Italy features uh, 60 million uh, people. Lombardy, 10 million, which is a big number for <laughs> Europe. I know that India is order of magnitude more populated than uh, other uh, European countries. And uh, this is Lombardy, and uh, we are here in Milan. Milan Politecnico di Milano. Politecnico di Milano was founded, uh, let's say, more than uh, 150 years ago. And uh, we have an architectural and design faculty, but the biggest part is about uh, engineering and uh, specifically chemical engineering and the department where I uh, work in. Okay, so. A very fast uh, uh, outline of my talk is about, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, virtual reality uh, in and uh, um, plant process simulation and accident simulation. And you will see why I will focus on this topic. First of all, the main causes for industrial accidents are most of the time that due to transportation, to the process, to loading and unloading, to storage. But you see that there is a good uh, portion directly linked to the uh, plant, the process, the real process. And specifically, between 60 and 85% of the times uh, we have an accident, we have a near miss, uh, we have an abnormal situation uh, to manage due to human errors. So human errors and organizational issues are and play a significant role. So uh, at present, we it is highly recommended to focus on human resources, human factors, uh, human beings, and specifically inside the plant, uh, the operators. And you know that operators are of mainly of two different uh, let's say categories, the control room operators, also known as prop, control room prop, and the FOP, FOP, field operators. So you have people who work inside the control room with a DCS, distributed control system, and the operators who work directly on the process in the plant in uh, uh, direct contact with uh, the process units. So it is a good uh, um, opportunity to move from steady state simulation to dynamic simulation, which means uh, that you try to understand how a process, how a plant uh, evolves in time, how it changes. And uh, since a plant usually is not fixed, is not stiff, is not blocked in time, but evolves in time, it is a good uh, opportunity to follow this uh, uh, evolution. And so, okay, let's go. And uh, by doing, uh, by running the dynamic simulation, we can have a better understanding of the process. Uh, we can use dynamic simulation also for design purposes, but also and mainly for training purposes. 
Okay, so uh, at present uh, we have the so-called OTS, which is the acronym for Operator Training Simulation. That are it, it, they are pieces of software. They are programs, very complex, that are usually um, developed for control room operators. But what about field operators and uh, how to improve the interaction between control room and field operators. By doing so, you can have uh, a study of spec conditions, uh, grade changes, but also start up a shutdown of uh, procedures that are procedures that are not so often run at the plant site. So you can first, before running the real startup or shutdown, you can make a simulation, you can run a simulation, you can train operators throughout the length of a startup or shutdown. They usually take hours, fractions of days, in some processes even days, two, three days. For instance, when you have to start up a, shut a furnace, a furnace requires a very long and smooth transient to heat and to uh, to to switch off of the furnace in case of shutdown so you can also focus on field operators and you can analyze what i was just introducing before abnormal situation near misses accident events hopefully when you have a real plant Hopefully, perhaps uh, in the life of the whole plant, 10, 20 years, no accident occur. This is, uh, this is a very good uh, issue. But what might happen in case an accident occurred, uh, happens? So you can train operators to face with very uncommon, rare events and uh, to see how they can react and understand um, and understand what is happening. So this is very important. It's, it's a good opportunity because you know that most of the accidents are due to human errors. So for instance, uh, having uh, a, 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 the coexistence of a process and accident simulator so you can simulate the accidents that might occur inside your plant allows you to increase the analysis and understanding of very rare accident events you can have you can also run um, event reconstruction accident event reconstruction but also try to simulate these very fast events in a slow motion so you can focus and you can slow down or as opposite if another opportunity to run faster if the accident takes a long time to train operators understand the real dynamics and expected dynamics this allows you to have a better picture of what might happen and how to react and operate in case of near misses or even worse in case of accident event. At present, we have a number of uh, simulators for accidents for safety reasons, but usually these simulators are based on steady state uh, approaches and are used offline. They are used usually by engineers to design, to understand, to see what might happen, but they are not linked directly on the real plant uh, to the real evolution of that plant in case of a real accident. These are a number, I, I, I just listed the most famous, and some of them, they are also very detailed, but unfortunately, they take a lot of time to simulate a short time, real time interval. So it, they might take two, three days of CPU 
to understand what might happen in a fraction of seconds or in a matter of a few minutes. And so you can understand that uh, I cannot use these uh, software for uh, training uh, operators because uh, the time would be huge and uh, you would not have a real-time simulator. So uh, inside the European Community Project uh, that involved a number of countries, Politecnico di Milano was, uh, I was saying that uh, inside the European Community about uh, 10, 15 years ago, we started developing this uh, simulator, accident simulator, we call that uh, AXIM which allows you to make simulations in real time, even faster time than the wall clock time, and uh, it receives, uh, receives sorry, uh, as input variables the outcomes from any process simulator, dynamic process simulator. By doing so, you are able not to have having uh, some fixed, assigned, pre-assigned flow rate, uh, uh, with, for instance, uh, liquid emission, gas emission, but something that changes in time dynamically and that can be calculated and coupled together with the process simulator. So, on one side, you have the process simulator that simulates what is inside your plant and the accident simulator that simulates uh, what happens outside, for instance, in case of a leakage. And I will run into this example in a matter of few minutes. And uh, Axim can also be used as a server client mode. So um, it can be used either as, as a standalone application or coupled to a dynamic process simulator. For instance, we coupled it to a Unisim from uh, Honeywell, but Unisim is, uh, let's say, the brother. It's very similar. Is very 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 similar to um, Aspen Isis, so it can run also with Aspen Isis. They are almost the same programs. By doing so, you you can run uh, simulations with liquid and gas emissions, spreading and evaporation, boiling and evaporating pools, pool fires, jet fires, fireballs unconfined vapor cloud explosions, uh, rapid phase transitions, and a number of other issues that I will not go through. We used it for event reconstruction, so offline to study what happened in case of a railway accident that occurred 10 years ago in Italy, and also to reconstruct the event of the um, uh, Texas City refinery accident of a BP, in, which occurred in 2005, but can also be used for training of uh, operators for online real-time training. So it can be applied, but it can be used for maritime carriers, so maritime transportation, railway transport. This is the accident that occurred 10 years ago in, in Italy. Um, it was a, 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 a freight train that was transporting LPG, road transportation, and industrial plants. Uh, I will just focus on industrial plants today. So it can be coupled to Unisim or also HiSIS, and uh, mm, but it also be can be used as a, a server client, uh, in a server client uh, um, attitude. And uh, we have a graphical user interface. We interact with all EE, object linking and embedding um, method. Do I have any more of a pointer? Yes, sir, sir. Actually, you have accepted that annotation. Uh, yes, I, I, I made a mistake. Yes, uh, <laughs> I understand now that I should have. Okay, now I can. Okay, good. Yes, sir. So, Again, sir, you have to share, I think, sir. Now uh, you no, have no, a good no, point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So you have a, we have a graphical user interface that was developed in, um, in Visual Basic. We interact with the process simulator. We exchange in a two-way 
the information between the process simulator. You see here, I go back to one slide, the process simulator provides the flow rate, the liquid vapor fractions, the temperature of what is emitted from a ruptured flange, from a vessel, from a hole, from what is, is emitted due to the accident. And then we make the calculations and we go back with, for instance, the heat radiation, the toxic concentration, the overpressure that goes back to the process simulator. So you, we have a two-way, one and two, two-way interaction. And this is very good because it allows us to uh, have a, a, a direct interaction, a, a real-time continuous interaction between the plant and the accident because the plant has an effect on the accident, for instance, on the emitted flow rate and once uh, we have uh, the accident, for instance, uh, a pool, uh, a liquid pool that spreads on the ground and then uh, it is uh, ignited and so it starts burning, the heat radiated from the pool goes back to the process units. And so we have uh, this kind of interaction. And the heat that arrives on the process units uh, due to the heat radiation uh, and to the view factors as an impact on the process units, uh, perhaps uh, the pressure might increase, the uh, liquid emitted, uh, the liquid emission is increased, and you see there is a, 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 a continuous interaction between the plant, the process, and the accident. So this two-way interaction is very important. Um, the, Simulator is developed in Fortran and is a DLL, dynamic link library. So it is very efficient, very, very, very fast because we have, uh, we need something that can run at least in with as the wall clock time, sometimes even faster to show a very slow transition and trans, sorry, transient to the trainee in order to make them more um, um, to allow them understanding better what is going on let us see this accident scenario i focused on a very common uh, plant uh, we are considering the hda hydro deactivation plant uh, which is a very standard plant it's very used also in the academia for running simulations so we have the supply section and we make an hypothesis that we have a hole. At some time, there is a hole in the pipe or a rupture of this flange, and there is a liquid emission. The pool starts spreading on the ground, and then we have a triggering event, event for instance, a, a spark, and this produces a flame. The flame starts radiating back to the process units and also to the field operators who have to work and try to solve the problem. Let us see what, is the, what are the main problems. First of all, we have to identify and make an alarm and issue an alarm in order to have a prompt reply, a prompt, a prompt emergency response by the uh, operators, the uh, process uh, plant operators. So you see that there is the interaction between the control room and the field operator. The control room can see some variables changing on their screens, on their synoptics. At the same time, the field operator. So can you see again my presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. I go back uh, where I was. Okay, I don't have any more the, the animation, but it's a minor problem. So you see here, we have, uh, um, I go back and start again uh, with uh, where I, I arrived. Uh, we have uh, the interaction between the control room and the field operator. As you can understand, when we have a real accident on the plant, uh, their interaction is very important and they must 
coordinate, there must be a coordination between the two, between them, because by doing so, they can decide if some actions should be carried out at the control room, but some other uh, actions must be carried out at the field level. For instance, every FOV, a field operated valve, field operated device, FOD, field operated device must be operated by the field operator. So also some valves, uh, some valves must be closed or opened by field operators. So you see the operator has to go and see what happens uh, and then uh, they have to go and back, go and close uh, a field operated bulb and then they must coordinate with the control room operators to see and manage and, and, and understand if everything is running correctly. And once they are done, then they can run away. But uh, what about uh, their exposure to the accident in terms of thermal load, heat radiated on their skin, on their protective devices, uh, and uh, what about the concentration of uh, toxic compounds and so on. Everything can be simulated, and then we will see that this can be carried out also in a virtual environment uh, with the help also of augmented virtual reality. I will dedicate some slides on this very important topic, and uh, you can increase the awareness, the so-called situation awareness of the operators and their understanding of the plant. So uh, we can understand and follow and quantify the consequences on the process units, but also on the operator. We can monitor, for instance, the temperature in time of the vessels of the process units, but also the thermal load, the dynamic thermal load on the operator in terms of, and these are, for instance, uh, the threshold reported in the literature for first, second, and third degree barns. So we can also show the operator according to the residence time, to the time they take uh, opening, closing the valves, uh, making uh, safer the process, uh, what is their exposure, their own risk. And uh, here uh, we will consider uh, two, uh, the, 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 the example reported before is more quantified. We have two storage tanks, uh, sorry, two tanks, one big, this is a storage tank, another smaller, a process drum. Then we have uh, the hole uh, in a pipe, uh, the pool spreading, uh, the fire, and we see the distances from the process drum, from the storage tank, the features, the geometric features, because you can understand that we have view factors, view factors between the flame and the process unit and between the flame and the, the operators. The first operator is here, the second operator runs here and closes the, this bulb to block the the, 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 the feed, the stream inside the pipe and reduce the liquid and extinguish the liquid uh, emission and extinguish the flame. So knowing all these features and knowing also making an hypothesis about the time they take to operate and to get aware of the accident, they take 10 minutes before they understand and then they take three more minutes and then seven more minutes to run a sequence of actions, we can simulate what is the impact on both the process units and the operators. We have also to simulate the liquid emission and every process simulator is capable of describing what is happening inside the process unit. But what happens when we have an, an emission, we emit something liquid, more rare, rarely solid, but also gas, outside, 
So we had to implement a splitter and we had to calculate a, 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 a process unit, a, a specific process unit, I, I, I would say tailored process unit that allows to describe the whole and the liquid emission. And so this is the leakage that goes outside of a, of a whole plant. By doing so, we can export the data from the process simulator and understand and quantify this leakage. So the leakage is described by a specific user-defined pseudo equipment that is the whole and allows us to inherit, to, to, to get, to import this data inside the accident simulator, which is Axim, to make all the calculations. At the end, you see here, we can see the diameter of the pool and uh, the height of the fire, the, and so we change it because we have a, an evaporating uh, liquid pool. It takes more than 2,000 uh, seconds. And at the same time, you, we can see the heat radiated to the parter uh, process unit that was the storage tank and uh, the intermediate drum. And uh, not only in terms of uh, radiative heat flux, but also in terms of uh, um, the, 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 the time spent by, by the operators. So, and uh, how, what is the amount of heat that arrives to the operators that after some time they decreases? Why? Because uh, the pool uh, is reduced because we have blocked the liquid emission by closing the field operated bowl. And so you see here that we can see for the two operators, number one and number two, two different levels of exposure. The first one would so suffer, let's say only, between quotes, only two degree bars, but the, the first one, the nearest one, would also suffer third degree, and there is the risk for the ignition of their clothing. So also if they are donning some protective clothing, uh, there is the risk for ignition. And uh, okay, the lethality threshold is not um, overcome, but however, this is a very high risk. So it is a good opportunity to train by means of simulation and make the operator understanding what is the risk if they take too much time closing the valve, and if they don't run very fast away and make a big distance between the flame and their own body. And again, you can see that after 15 minutes, we close the, they close the valve, and so we can see the decrease in the, um, the flame radiation, and here, the temperature for the big storage tank. And you see that since it is very big, the increase is uh, not so, so significant, let's say only two degrees C to Kelvin of temperature increase from 300 to 302 Kelvin, but the heat that arises, that impinges the uh, equipment is not negligible. Uh, let's say 0 0.5 uh, megawatt. At the same time, for the smaller uh, process drum, you see that the temperature is much higher. There is an increase of 10 degrees uh, Kelvin, 10, 10 Kelvin or 10 uh, Celsius, and this might be a problem, depending on what are the substances that are inside the process drum, also in terms of the increase of pressure. And you see that the heat radiation that arrives on this equipment is smaller, only let's say 0.12 megawatt. But, but the dimension and the holdup is smaller, and this is, can be a problem. So now 
that we have made these simulations and you can see the quantitative bits of information, it's a good opportunity not to show these diagrams that are very clear to engineers, but are less clear that they produce a lower impact on the operators who are usually not engineers. They are not so expert. So let us see what we can achieve by means of virtual reality and augmented virtual reality for operator training simulation. And uh, okay, I will not go into details of this slide because it would take uh, at least uh, 10 minutes to describe, but you see here we have a dynamic process simulator, for instance, Unisim or Aspen Plus or DynSim, any process simulator that might be linked together with the accident simulator, for instance, Axim, and this produces the strength simulator. We, all, we can also design the experiment where our trainees should be trained, and we have also an additional module, I will not have the time to go more in details, but which allows to perform automatically a performance assessment, which means that the operators are measured in terms of their efficiency, in terms of their, their situation awareness, in terms of their promptness to respond to the accident, and uh, we can provide a detailed description of their performance. And then we can, we can, sorry, we can train them and we can also run the full experiment. Okay, so, this is the whole description. You see that we have the control room that runs in front of a standard process flow diagram. And we have the field operator that is in front of a big screen retro projected in 3D. So with a dimensional, uh, with a, a vision 3D dimension, like in the movies at the cinema. And we can run both uh, standard operations and also accident simulations. So let us see what we mean by virtual reality. Okay, the operator is usually, this is the field operator who can run inside, run, I mean, move, run, uh, move inside the plant. This is the plant section. And you see that the, every piece of equipment is very realistic in terms of uh, weather conditions, uh, uh, sunny, foggy conditions, uh, uh, time of the day, and also noise, which is registered online. And then we can, we can see and they can hear the real noise because the environment should be as far as possible immersive because the higher the immersivity, the higher the impact on the emotional status of the operator. And by doing so, the operator is more emotionally involved and they understand better what is occurring and they leave the emotional status of running in this plant. And you see also that the plant is not perfect, it's dirty, we are reporting the real skin conditions, the, 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 the description of the real plant. So if the plant is clean, okay, we draw it clean. If it is dirty, it, we, get, we can reproduce also uh, some rusty conditions and other issues that allow to see a very high similarity with the real environment. This plays an important role in increasing the situation awareness of the operator. So here you see we have the different, the different gauges of the, the, of, the, of the plant, very important, very nice, and uh, we have a virtual environment, 3D stereoscopy vision to increase the immersivity, and also immersive spatial audio. You see here field operated devices. These devices can also be moved and operated manually by means, for instance, of a Kinect um, device 
the one that was uh, commercialized in the past by Microsoft that allows you to identify the movement of your hands and your gestures and you can use your gestures to interact to rise when you raise your hand for instance a help a screen appears to help to support the trainee when the, he is they are training when they are going to be assessed if they raise their hand, no screen, no help screen appears because they are being tested respect to the real environment. But by doing so, you can run a number of different. And you see here the shadows, the colors, the, the dirty on the different equipment. The, Okay, you cannot hear now the noise, but there is the noise of the environment, of the surrounding 3D immersive Dolby surround noise. And you see also the shadows, the colors. And here, you look at this gauge. Here, it is in direct light. The, la the light, the sunlight arises from my shoulders, from my back, direct on this device, measuring device pressure gauge but you see here the the sun moved so the experience is completely different and what about now you it is not night but uh, the sun went down so i cannot really see the gauge so you can experience the same plant is positioned can be uh, there are the coordinates that on the earth so you can put it in milan you can put in india you can put it in uh, australia you can put it in uh, the usa or in london and uh, you can also simulate different weather conditions and different times of the day this is night so artificial illumination and you see here that is more difficult to move more difficult to understand what is um, happening because it is night and here it is raining. We can also simulate fog, snow. We can simulate the accident. So this excavator that it's a pipe and uh, um, um, there is a flange rupture. And you see here that from this flange, because the excavator hit uh, this pipe, then there is a liquid emitted. And everything is not pre-calculated this is not a serious game it's not a serious game it is uh, everything is uh, simulated and uh, in real time so we have a liquid emission we can calculate the throw where the liquid arrives and we know the temperature of the of the terrain of the ground we can calculate uh, the evaporation of, of the pool and uh, a lot of different features that allow you to increase your understanding. What about augmented virtual reality? Okay, this is not al augmented reality. In augmented reality, you have the real environment. For instance, we are here in New York, in Central Park, and you use your mobile phone, for instance, to frame this building and understand for instance where is a coffee shop uh, uh, starbucks or anything else uh, and they uh, this augmented reality allows you to uh, to get additional information additional bits of information from the real environment but now we are in a virtual reality and so we can provide additional augmented virtual reality for instance we can see through the equipment this is a reboiler and we can see the level here of this gauge we can see that it is uh, full uh, with 62 uh, percent this is the liquid hold up this we have an information about normal condition this is something that allows to get a better understanding an augmented understanding in the virtual environment but you see also that here the level uh, was increased we have a, a high level alarm and uh, the liquid hold up is higher 80 percent 
or okay very good we have this is the liquid emitted the pool spreading and evaporating and i can add some bits of information this is this green box is augmented virtual reality you see that we don't have a flame so the heat radiation is is negligible we don't have any thermal load because we don't have any flame we don't have a pool fire we are we just have the liquid pool spreading on the ground but we know the pool height 8.28 millimeters the pool temperature so the operator can understand that if, if they go there they might get burns due to the very cold liquid and also the impact distance so from here to there there are 7.64 meters and the reboiler percent level so you can receive more bits of information in a real environment you don't have these bits of information so it is up to the trainer either to provide this information or to remove it we can help the trainee when they are training and then we can remove the augmented reality the augmented virtual reality when they are testing when they are tested against their understanding when they are assessed in terms of their uh, training and you see this is another bit of information very important as a function of where the specific operator and how they move, they receive a different amount of radiative heat that can be transformed in terms of thermal load. You see here that uh, working the plant and not paying very attention, a big attention to the distance from the flame, they would reach after a few minutes uh, a barns higher than the second degree barn which is not a good issue. Training methods, and I go to the end of my presentation. We can perform a guided tour. I mean, I take you around the plant like being in a museum, and I can show instead of paintings, I can show the pieces of equipment, this reboiler, distillation column, the other reboiler, heat exchanger, flanges, pipes, pipe racks, and so on so i can show the meaning of for instance also providing audio messages that explain so the operator the trainee can also train alone without the support of a trainer the trainer might be present the trainer might trigger some events but they also can train alone before interacting with the trainer and they can understand the name of the equipment what are, what are their functions and normal operating conditions. They can receive information, written or audio information. And then there is also a tutorial. The tutorial means uh, there is a virtual trainer that asks the trainee, please go to T101. T101 is the power 101. And so you should understand if this is T101 or that is T101 or the other down there. Or where is the heat exchanger or a boiler? Um, heat exchanger 102 or field of operated valve 105. Okay, they start understanding the geopositioning inside the plant and they recognize the different pieces of equipment and the different devices. And then uh, they ask you, for instance, to locate this BOV 103. And you should be able to say if this is one or that one or the other one. If you make a mistake, you can raise your hand and you can have uh, um, additional uh, help. And uh, you can also be guided to go back and restart your training session in order to improve the understanding of the plan that you have got. And then they ask you to open, to close, to see what happens when you open and close in terms of pressure, in terms of flow rates, and uh, uh, other bits of information. And you can also run a number of uh, 
operations. I will not go into the detail of this, but this is the full experiment. So let us see how the field operator interact uh, with the control room operator in case, for instance, of a near miss or in case of an accident, as the one that I described just before. This is the whole picture. The operator are in two different rooms. This is a not very real example because this operator stays in one room. This is the control room operator. The other operator is in another room and they talk by push and talk devices, walkie talkie devices with the same noise, the same disturbances that occur in a real environment, just to get a better situation awareness and better uh, emotional involvement that allows to enhance the quality of their training. Final remarks and open issues. Okay, for sure, we have some uh, added value improvements in terms of safety, in terms of production. We can increase the productivity of a plant by reducing the out of spec or near misses or being more prompt in responding to accident events. We can have some profits for the, for the, for the plant holder and also for the personnel because we can track and uh, create very experienced uh, um, operators, specifically field operators, that before going in the field, in the real plant, they can get uh, and they can be trained more in a more robust and more reliable way. Conclusions, uh, I think that the virtual environments are very promising we ran these uh, these uh, these activities uh, between 15 and uh, 8 9 years ago and uh, um, we demonstrate i think that we were able to demonstrate the feasibility of these issues probably 10 years ago was too early and uh, we missed some opportunities that are, are arriving now you can also don uh, Oculus Rift, uh, virtual environments, uh, glasses, Google Glasses, and so on, that allow you to have a better understanding. The cost of uh, this virtual environment is going down very fast. In the past, they cost uh, the projectors, the 3D projector cost more than 100,000 euros which is more or less $100,000 US dollars. They were very expensive. Now projectors are less expensive than 8,000, 10,000 uh, euros. You can also don uh, the um, Oculus Rift. They are even cheaper, let's say the order of uh, 800, 1,000 dollars, 1,000 euros. They are not very ex um, expensive. The computers are even more efficient. The, um, the video cards, the graphical cards, NVIDIA and so on, they are very uh, efficient. They are more powerful. They can deal with a higher detail, increasing the involvement, increasing the emotional uh, understanding of the operators. And so it, it, I think it's time to also explore and go in that direction. I would thank everybody for attending this uh, talk and uh, for your attention, and uh, I am open to try to answer to any of your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very informative session. So uh, I'll now uh, hand over this to our uh, Session moderators Sanjana, uh, Sanjana Ashish Sovik, take it forward. But before that, I have a question, sir. The uh, question is uh, that uh, I mean, can this be used in terms of uh, road safety enhancement? For example, if you have traffic, like sir, in Tata Steel, uh, we are struggling with internal roads, the traffic on internal roads, the road incidences. So, seeing the traffic load on a road, the heavy vehicle movement along with the pedestrian movement. 
So can this model be utilized for, uh, I mean, uh, predicting incidences on road also, or accident simulation on road? Uh, yes, uh, I I think that you can make uh, simulations also for road accidents, and uh, uh, I it depends. For for sure, we ran uh, something with that is very similar to reconstruct the uh, Viareggio accident that uh, occurred uh, in 2009, 12 years ago in, uh, in Italy. And there were 32 fatalities and uh, a number of houses broken by explosion, by fire, pool fire, jet fire, vapor cloud, mm, sorry, not vapor cloud explosion, but uh, gas dispersion and uh, very complex. In that case uh, we ran a um, accident event reconstruction it took uh, one no sorry two three months uh, of simulation and uh, uh, but you can I mean, simulations i mean uh, because we had to build the, the models because uh, the problem was very difficult and it was also difficult to have uh, the input data because uh, there were also uh, under um, judgment and under the um, law, Italian law, and so the information was uh, restricted, was uh, reduced. But you can, you can also go for this training. Uh, sir, one more question that's related to fire safety. Uh, sir, in conveyor fires, there may be many reasons, right? So we have a uh, rubbing uh, on the pulley side, which may lead to conveyor fires. There may be hot metal conveying on fires. So can this be used there also? Yes, for fire, we used it. Um, we also made a fire extinguisher simulator, for instance, for a completely different um, uh, approach we used it uh, for two different applications one industrial so a big uh, uh, fire extinguisher uh, run on a specific uh, plant uh, where also um, um, hydrogen fluoride is present so fluoride acid uh, is present very very dangerous and the other for a much smaller environment, uh, like an office, uh, to train people. Because, for instance, in Italy, if you work in a company, you are a standard employee, you should undergo a course about safety, and you should be able to extinguish a fire with a small fire extinguisher. Okay, The, the red one, uh, let's say, 8, 10 kilos. And so you can make, uh, again, uh, with virtual environment, uh, you can make these uh, simulations. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, uh, Ashish, over to you. Ashish, Sovik. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, Mom. So <clears throat> thank you, Professor Manka, uh, for this wonderful lecture. Now we have a lot of questions. So let me take some of the questions. First question is, uh, how human errors are incorporated in dynamic simulations? How human? Human errors can be incorporated in dynamic simulations. Sorry, I didn't understand. Human? Error, error. Human ah, error. Human error. Okay, human error. Uh, okay. Uh, for instance, uh, Let's say that some errors. Oh, okay, there are two kinds of errors. Errors that can be designed a priori and uh, see how the different trainees behave. For instance, I design, I decide that after five minutes, uh, the excavator breaks the pipe and then the liquid goes out. So this is design. And the, the trainer can decide to make it happen after five minutes, after three minutes, after 10 minutes, or not happen at all. This is one point. 
The other point is the trainee has to go in the field and close the vault. But then if uh, this is the, the, the place where there is the flame and this is the operator and the, the, the vault is here, how does they move? That they move in this way, in this way. What is the path? And uh, what is the exposure to the flame? So in that case, since uh, we know at every time the place where the operator is because they are moving in this virtual environment, if they make the mistake to go very near to the flame, then the thermal load increases so much. So at the end, I can show the operator the error they made by showing, for instance, the thermal load. Perhaps uh, one operator is very good and they didn't even reach the threshold of first degree barn. The other operator was not so smart, not so expert. They made a mistake. They remained, they were not very fast. They were not able to find the correct valve. They took too much time and they were more exposed in, term, in terms of thermal load. In that situation, you can have the, 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 the software in real time registers all these, what is happening, and also can provide the information. For instance, another important point that I wouldn't say error, but I would say performance. How much time do the trainee takes to close the hole? One minute, two minutes, one minute and 48 seconds, okay, I can quantify and measure the liquid that is emitted and the liquid that goes and produces the pool. For instance, one uh, trainee uh, al allows only 25 liters of liquid to be emitted, the other 42, and the other one 87. So you have different rankings of performance or also errors. If you uh, close the valve, but at the end you get a three degree burns, so that is your mistake. You, you were not so efficient in solving the problem. You see? Yeah, so... Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Manka, for this uh, nice explanation. Now uh, we have another question that is basically uh, how can we use virtual reality in simulating risk and hazards at the concept design stage? How can we use virtual reality to simulate risks and hazards at concept design stage? Uh, can you write somewhere this question because the acronym is not so clear to me uh, just just a minute just a minute sir so you can check, check your chat box human by means of any motion abnormality and prevent any further may have thereafter okay uh, so, uh, what, what is the question I have mailed you you can check in the chat box how can we use virtual reality in simulating risk and hazards at concept design stage. Ah, okay, 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 I understand. Okay. I think that this stage, according to my knowledge, is not yet used. Uh, I mean, virtual reality is also time consuming, very expensive in terms of. Uh, you, you need a number of experts because you don't need only engineers, but also graphical experts mm -hmm. and also uh, people who can use the same engines as video games. These are not video games because you saw that there are simulators behind, but the, 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 the environment is the same as moving in a video game. So, they are very resource intensive. They might take uh, at least seven, eight months 
to be delivered, so they are very expensive. The order, the order of magnitude goes from half a million at least to one million of euros for these simulators, unless you make them very, 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 very small, very, very, very focused. But then you have a more complex plant. You have to tailor and build that simulator for that, for that plant. So from my point of view, these simulators, these virtual environments are not yet used for design purposes. They are used after the plant has been designed to train operators. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. The, uh, the, yes, sir. So the next uh, question which we are taking is, is there anything we need to be cautious about while training operators and in AVR? Yes, I understand. Uh, uh, okay. I think that there is the risk, the same risk that uh, we, uh, we might uh, start facing when we will start driving uh, cars such as Tesla or any other car with automated uh, driving system. You get relaxed and you know that the system, the car, does everything for you. At the same time, for instance, augmented virtual reality is very helpful because it allows you to, for instance, to understand if your thermal load is increasing and you are facing the risk of first, second, third degree burns. So very good. But when you remove the augmented virtual reality and you are in the real plane, what might happen? I would say that on one side you can use with a, some attention augmented virtual reality to increase the understanding of the people. But if you keep on working with augmented virtual reality, then when you go in the real plane, you should provide the same amount of information in the real environment. How, for instance, with uh, Google Glasses or something that allows you to see the real plant and the, uh, the, the augmented reality in that case. Because if you are used to train with augmented virtual reality, then it's the same that you should be using also the real, the real um, added information in the real environment. Yeah. Otherwise, there is a risk. This is a risk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And the last question uh, we are taking, I have, I have messaged you in the chat box is the, if there is any problem. Is VR, yeah. is VR adept and reliable enough to identify fatigue motions of humans by means of any motion abnormality and prevent any further mishap thereafter. Okay, okay. Um, I didn't go through another level that goes beyond the virtual reality, augmented virtual reality, which is mixed reality. Mixed the virtual reality is something that you are in, an, in a virtual environment, but at the same time, you have some stuff real. For instance, there is a real valve, and then you have not to only simulate uh, and show the, the gesture, but you have, let's say, let's say this real device, for instance, this device, <laughs> let us say that this is a ball, which is not a ball, and it's a clock, and you have to move it physically. This ball, might, for instance, might also be very stiff, not stiff, sorry, very sticky, very, very, very difficult, very heavy. So you have to use your muscles. And we were asked to train, but then we didn't uh, go through that project, but to train people in very hot environments, for instance, in Africa, in the north of Africa, near Sahara. Sahara is a desert in Africa. And uh, there was a plant uh, near Sahara. And then they, 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 the operators had to 
walk the stairs, go upstairs to the top of the column, who is donning their breathing mask because there was also toxic environment. And we wanted to train them in Italy. And so we were, we made a design, we designed a, 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 a solution, but then we didn't implement it because it was very expensive to hit the people with uh, infrared lamps and to make them walk in stairs, continuous stairs that go. And so they simulate that you have to climb one, two, three, four, ten floors, and at the same time breathing the mask and donning the virtual environment. So it seems that you are in that plant in Africa. Instead, you are here in Milan in a different plant. And uh, you are not exposed, uh, and the, the, the place is much smaller. But uh, these are even more complex issues. And uh, yes, also, we were also uh, designing an experiment to train people who have to re uh, remove the trash, the rubbish, sorry, the rubbish, um, municipal rubbish, and the, with a big, uh, I don't know the English term, big uh, packets, let's say, of rubbish, and to throw it uh, on the trucks. The, the municipality waste, okay? And so this waste, they have to throw it in a cart way, otherwise after one, two, three years, their uh, backbone is uh, injured. And uh, again, uh, they would be trained in and assessed the movement, uh, tracking the movement. It, 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 you can go through these solutions. They are very, I would say, top solutions. Very, there is not yet a well-defined procedure. You should use customized, very tailored solutions. So they are expensive and they are also quite difficult. But you can, you can, uh, you can do it because we were discussing about these issues a five to eight years ago yeah so uh, thank you thank you very much for these uh, detailed explanations of the queries uh, so now i would like to hand over the session to miss momitra please thank you, Ashish. Uh, so thank you sir for a very very informative and fruitful session especially for uh, industries uh, where process incidences and uh, road uh, are still a great reason. So I would request our uh, convener of the weekend talk series, Professor Obi Krishna, to propose a formal vote of thanks. Sir, over to you. So, Professor David Bunker, what a great talk you are giving. I have not heard such talk in uh, virtual reality or augmented reality till now. And you, the new term, uh, Augmented virtual reality, I heard uh, earlier, I never knew this both uh, virtual reality, augmented reality combined with uh, augmented virtual reality. I have, uh, uh, I have a fundamental doubt. Is the process system engineering lab, is a different uh, company or it's a part of an university? Because so much of work, how can you do in, in the universities, the students keep coming and going. How do we complete these projects? Just will you please tell me? Uh, because it requires huge work. Can the okay. students do okay. this? Okay. Uh, we, uh, we used, uh, um, first of all, we had a big contract with a, a European company, research, com uh, sorry, research uh, project. It the last, uh, uh, five years, five years from let's say 2005 to 2010. Then, uh, when we arrived to the end, uh, we created a, a kind of spin off, a spin off company. So, from dot uh, uh, org, we became a dot com and we went on running for three, four years. 
and uh, there, there was a big company who put a lot of money to, because we had to hire uh, programmers, not only engineers. We, okay. we, there was a good number of engineers. They took the decisions, but then you have also need the need of programmers. And uh, we spent a lot of uh, money. We had also an agreement with uh, Honeywell, but uh, unfortunately, at the end, uh, everything failed. <laughs> and yeah. We had to close. We lost a lot of money and uh, also the big company. Uh, it's not a problem. It was uh, Solvay, Solvay Solexis. Um, and um, we, I put a lot of work without any, any return <laughs> from investment, <laughs> only work. <laughs> lot of time spent, let's say, big experience for sure, a lot of publications, okay, but uh, no, <laughs> no one euro in my pocket. I spent a lot of money, but uh, I lost everything. And probably because uh, it was, uh, we made some, uh, some, some, uh, some, some projects, but at the end of the whole balance was negative and we had to close. We interacted also with Total, and uh, at that time, uh, it was probably too early, too early. And uh, now uh, I think that a lot of things are changing. Also, the cost of the, the hardware and also how people are starting looking at these solutions. So I can understand. And uh, you can use also these tools uh, in a reduced way for uh, training uh, of uh, students, engineering students. We are starting some small, 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 small projects now also because of COVID. So doing a virtual labs, uh, virtual uh, laboratories and so on. You can try, but uh, these solutions take a lot of time and a lot of people, a lot of resources. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the problem we are also facing. Uh, suppose if you if you take uh, a project of uh, making a training package on some process incident, important process incident, process company, how much time you take normally for that? Ah uh, yes, at least uh, from eight to twelve a month, uh, working very hard. At least because you have to uh, a big problem that, that is still present now, and that uh, is that. Uh, mm, companies, big companies, also big, big, big companies do not have 3D drawings of their plant. So yeah. you have to go at the plant and with uh, 3D clouds systems, you have to rebuild and reconstruct the, the real structure of the whole plant. And then you have, for instance, to sample all the noises of the different process units because by doing so, you have a bigger involvement. You are like in a, in a big, real, virtual environment. And then you have to, to get all the textures of the equipment and then also to design all the process, the accidents, the simulation of the different events that can be triggered. It is a matter of uh, running. And also, at the, the very beginning, we were, uh, when, when I, I showed that slide with the structure, that was a very super condensed way of showing our solution. We had to develop all the different the frameworks and tools uh, to run together. So the engine behind it uh, was very difficult. Also because uh, your one of the good questions was how you can design new experiments. We had also to design the experiment designer. So when you have, it's like uh, creating single tools uh, that you put in your toolbox. The first time your toolbox is void, is empty, sorry, not void, empty, and then you have to put and create your single toolboxes. When the uh, tool, tools, when you have all your tools inside your toolbox, then you can use them 
much faster, but it takes time. For instance, <laughs> uh, just to say, Axim, just to give you an idea, Axim took uh, at least three, four years. Yeah. And uh, thank you. It was increasing. We added different modules according to, and also we tested it, and uh, at the end we also created an environment that was able to be called by external different procedures, be strong, robust testing, reliability. It takes time. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Manka, for your very good explanation. It's very essential for us, for our lab, at least, for our center of excellence. It's very, very essential. In India, we have great uh, potential and uh, our COE has got a lot of scope. If we really understand, Professor Maiti is hearing, if he really understands what sort of resources are required, what, how to make it mature, probably we, we, may, we may be in contact with you for more uh, details to make our welcome. COE more you are successful. Welcome. You're welcome, uh, absolutely. I am yeah. available. I, Mary, thank you. Thank you very much. I also thank the moderators, uh, Mom, Sinjana, Ashish, and Savik, and Professor Maiti, the chairman of CYE, and the participants, the 160 participants. So I am seeing the chat box. So many questions they are putting the chat box, and they could not put put. I mean, a few questions only that they have put. Actually, they are they were asking so many questions. Your talk has uh, liberated uh, uh, so many questions in the minds of the people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. If can... anybody wants to ask any other questions, you can write to me. Okay, you it, it, you you browse the internet, um, Davide Manca Politecnico, and you will find my email, which is Davide dot Manca at Polimi, which is Politecnico Milano Polimi dot it but however it is easier you browse the internet davide manca polytechnico you find the email and you can send me the email with your questions and i will try to answer thank you thank you thank you such a such a great busy person giving this sort of uh, a facility is really great thank you very much thank you very much professor manca and well, thank you the participants thank you participants uh, for your active active interaction active participation Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. Meet you. We'll meet you again next Friday at the same time with some other great speakers. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you and have a good Thank time. Thank you, Professor Manka. Thank you. Bye. See you. We'll be in touch, Professor Manka. We, we, we need your support. Okay. Perfect. It's fine with me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. hosting Thank you. my and for giving me the opportunity. To, to, to give this talk. It was very uh, enjoying and I very liked the big uh, participation um, also at a late time in the evening for you, but uh, I very enjoyed uh, your, your interesting questions and your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.